So I wanted to see whether I could change PowerPoint into an AI course creator. No fancy software, no coding, just me, PowerPoint, and a very smart tool. Because let's be honest, PowerPoint's been around forever, but lately it's just got a little bit more smarter. Let's have a look. So for this experiment, I'm gonna be using iSpring, which is an add-on on PowerPoint. It's a really good tool to use to create interactive online learning. You know, maybe you've already started some online courses in the past. You can create courses from scratch. You can create courses from content you already have. Quizzes, you can add role plays, you can add simulations, characters. It's got really cool AI tools we can use, which I'm gonna show you. So you can take full advantage of using it on iSpring. So I'm gonna be showing you how it all works, showing you the AI tools and the top ways that I personally would use iSpring if I've never used it before or just getting started. There are some requirements you need in order to download iSpring, which I will be going into a bit. So the great thing is, first of all, what I like is that you don't need to go to ChatGPT first like most softwares. You've already got AI tools available in iSpring. So I'm gonna show you the AI tools first and then I'm gonna dig deeper in some great examples about different ways you know iSpring can be used. So when you've downloaded it, it will automatically be added on into your PowerPoint. So you'll see at the top here after help, there's iSpring suite there. There's lots of different options. You've got recording audio, video, manage narration. You've got quizzes, interaction, role play, screen recording, web objects, characters, backgrounds, objects, icons. So there are three different ways I wanna show you how you can make full use of the AI assistant inside iSpring. Before doing anything else in your course creation, I recommend trying this first because it's gonna speed up the process. So for example, my topic is top five ways we procrastinate. So it then generates a script, slides, title pages. You can even choose a design if you want to. In this case, I've just let it do it all. So all I needed to do is give them basically three words and this is what they've created. If you're not wanting that much text, then you do need to give them more information. I've been very vague, but I would suggest giving them as much information as you can. So the first button I would recommend is checking is slide templates because, you know, great, we've got a presentation that's kind of been made, but that's just one example of how you could use the AI system. So these are slide template that you can use inside a course. So you don't need to start from scratch. You can use some of the templates and I definitely recommend checking them out. So here, when you scroll down, you'll see you can put in opening, navigation sections. So you could maybe choose one style, title page, module, main menu. And when you like your one you see, click insert. So for this case, we've deleted everything else because I wanna show you everything from scratch. You could use one for objective, course objectives. And I'm gonna show you right now how you can also get your course objectives without having to leave anywhere because you could again use the AI system for that. So here um, you'll see, on the AI system, you've got add a slide, add a topic, summarize this presentation. So I would suggest using summarize this presentation because then what it will do is it'll give you course objectives. So you've already sorted out what your presentation is gonna be. So instead of you having to faff about, go on to that and it will give you your course objective. So here, copy paste over, obviously check it before putting it on, just to check it's accurate. So now the third way I would recommend using the AI assistant is like with ChatGPT where it creates images. So if you want to create an image from scratch, just like you do with ChatGPT or any AI assistant, you describe what the image is or the other option is to simply you know, go to um, insert, get the images already on the stock library on PowerPoint and do that. So those are three ways I would recommend using the AI assistant. First of all, use the assistant so that you can create your full PowerPoint with just one prompt. Second of all, I would recommend using it to summarize your content with course objectives and anything else you may need, you know, to summarize or outline your course. And third of all, use the assistant, you know, to create images, for example, or anything else you might need creating instead of going elsewhere. Before we continue, I just wanna say a massive thank you to iSpring who is sponsoring this video today. I'm really excited to show you guys what iSpring has to offer to see if it's something that you want to try for yourself. I will pop the trial link below as well so you can check it out and try it out for free, see what you think. Now we're gonna have a look about how we can start adding interaction. It's so important, you know, to be able to get the learner to click and interact in some form or another. So you'll see here, you'll click on it, choose interaction type. So you've got here steps, if you want step one, step two, step three, you can do that one. You've got a timeline, process, select process, tabs, media catalog. So. Have a play around, see which one you fancy. You've got here, add a tab. So you can pick how many tabs you want. The only thing that limited it here is that you can't go onto the content library or find one. You need to save the pictures on your computer before doing this interaction. So when you're ready, put your title page, put your image in there, text, whatever you want. 
In this case, I'm going to use five examples of procrastination. So we've got perfectionism, get an image, pop it in there. So I'm going to show you in a second how it actually looks on the preview because right now it's the back end and you're like, how does it actually look? I'm going to show you one more example of a label graphic. So again, I'll use the same examples with a label graphic. You change the image on the right and then drag wherever you want the label to be. So you'll see here, you can just move them around how, how and where you please. So now how do we preview it? So if you go to that preview button, preview from the beginning, you'll see here, you can just hover over it and you'll see at the top, in all devices, so it's very good for mobile friendly. You can check the tablet, lots of different device sizes. So make sure that you do check all devices as well. And then I'm gonna show you one more interaction and then I'm gonna show you another great feature that you can use within iSpring. So now here you could again use media catalog if you wanted, I don't think it really makes sense for this topic, but just to show you how easy it is to simply make some cards with just an image and some text. Play around with the custom preset if you want to use your color and brand color. So now I'm gonna show you an example of how you can use characters with backgrounds as well as role plays. You know, especially if you're in a workplace or you want to understand how to do a role, it's better to actually have characters that are in that real situation so you feel like you're actually there. You'll see here, I'm gonna pick a background, lots of options, offices, stores, or public institutions, hospitals, you name it, there's a background. And then also I want to pick my own character. So when you click the characters button, you'll see there's quite a few options. So, so when you do click on a character, it has a different poses. So he could be happy, sad, hands crossed, hands down. Have a look what options you have. There's quite a few of this guy. We're gonna use him as maybe the manager or the coach. And he's chilling, cool vibes, hands in pockets, as you do. Now we want another one. Maybe she's the one that's, you know, having trouble, she's procrastinating, so maybe she looks stressed. And there she is, add to the slide. So now what can we do? So this could be the introduction slide, you could introduce these characters, who they are, what their roles are, add a text box. But what, what I really wanna show you is the role play. So in order for you to use the same characters, so click on role play, I would say this is the most difficult part of iSpring, so take it a step by step, try it out, see what you think, and obviously use the tutorial, video tutorials if you wanna go more in depth. When you start, you click new scene, we've got character speech, which is what the character will say. So the replies, the learner will select one answer, for example, and then we have add message. So if you want a message to pop up saying, well done, you're correct, you can do that on the right as well. We have character emotion, happy, sad, angry, etc. In order for you to get the same character, you need to go on to add from content library. Find the exact same character, as well as the exact same background. What is you happy? Pop in whatever you're gonna say. Hi, are you okay? Do you need help? Obviously you could use the assistant to figure out what this situation is going to be with the role play. In this case, Colin noticed Sarah looks stressed. How should she approach her? Let's just use a quick example. Use a different couple of examples here. Ignore her and leave. I wouldn't recommend that. So what would the correct answer be? But let's go on the preview just to show you how it looks. So he will pop up like this and you as the learner will pick option one, two or three. So in order for you to link the other character or link that answer, you need to click that drag to link. So when you click the link, this will pop up and it will allow you to link that answer to another character or another situation. So again, we're gonna change the character to the other lady and what will she then say? So you can make lots and lots of new scenes. So it can continue on for ages and ages, use the emotions, but this is really, really good for role playing. Another one is, you know, you've got audio. If you want to have role play, you want voices, so you can use the audio feature as well. Record your own voice or, you know, use AI tools to do that. So with Grady Quiz, you can have multiple choice, multiple response, true, false, sequence, matching, hotspot, etc. And this is how it will look on the preview. So now we're ready to go. To share this, you can go to upload it to the iSpring Cloud if you want to save it there, to save space on your laptop, for example. If you are uploading to the LMS, just check it's not it's gone 1.2 because because it automatically just has settings for you. So just double check where you're uploading to and what the settings are required. So this is a completed course. It's a little bit more than just PowerPoint slides. It's a nice interactive course. Obviously, you know, you spend more time in it, do your brand colors and really, you know, focus on getting it to a full complete course that you're happy with. There are some limitations with iSpring. So for example, you can only use it on a Windows device. And obviously if you don't have PowerPoint, then you will need to download it. One thing I can suggest is that if you only have a MacBook, you can use different systems like Parallels, which allows you to use Windows inside your MacBook. It's just like basically an app. So I really enjoy sharing how I get on with tools with you guys, giving you the most honest reviews I possibly can to help you understand whether something may work for you as a tool or not. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give me a like if you did like this video and subscribe for more weekly updates. Thank you guys. Have a good one.